everybody. Welcome to That Sick, the podcast where we talk about everything that's fascinating and disgusting. We break it down for your entertainment. Yes. My name is Heather. I'm Justine. I'm JB. And we're here for another installment. Which episode is this? Episode 12? 12. Yeah. It's a power number. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Three is a power number. Okay. Three is a power number? Why? Three. I don't know. It just is. Power of threes, etc. I guess so. I believe three is you. very lucky in Chinese mm. culture. Four is very unlucky. That's very true. Four is very un- unlucky in Chinese culture. It's like 13 to us. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. Just a little bit of a 13 is nothing to them. They're fine with 13. Four, though. Four, Fuck though, four. Is, is death. Death. Okay. Well, 12 in numerology, you would add the one and the two, and it becomes three. So there you go. 12. Still a power number. 12 is great. I believe it. So uh, let's get right down to what is the sickest thing of the week? I have a little bit of a something something, which involves my cat. Ooh. So oh, I'm going to go into that really quick. Uh, TB got a hair's cut and he looks so cute. We, he got a little lion cut and they left a little poof, the poof ball tail at the end. And the other day I came back from going to the grocery store and I was like, this house smells like cat shit. <laughs> it smells so bad. And um, then I realized that Long story short, TB had a gigantic turd stuck to the poof ball end of his. At least you could see it very easily on him as he is a, a white fluffy boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so gross. It was so mm-hmm. sickeningly smelly. And I had to give him, I, I'd wash his little tail in the bathtub. Aww. And yeah, so that was very sick for me. What about you guys? I went to Colonial Williamsburg last week and I saw the streets filtered with lots of horse shit, which was sick. Oh, yeah. Did you see uh, what kind of horses did they have there? Like the did they have, like the little fancy cabs that you can like take a horse drawn carriage? Those existed. Yes. But the horses look, I don't know, like a garden variety working horse. I'm sure there's a horse at the Smithy. I didn't see the. Um, it may have been out on a stroll. Did you buy any pewter uh, souvenirs? I did not. I did not buy. I did buy a tri-cornered hat, but I did not buy any pewter. Oh, I was was jealous of that tri-corn hat. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's going to be my shit now. That that hat was heavily featured in all of your social media posts. I bought it the first day I was there and I wore it every single day. I love you. (laughs) I wore it to the pool. (laughs) I was like, I'm wearing my goddamn tri-cornered hat. Oh, my God. Are you going to wear Are you going to wear it to the Ren Fair? No, I have to dress in Ren costume for yeah, the Ren Fair. Oh, is that not That's appropriate? Too late. That's oh. too late. Yeah, this... I don't know anything about that. Yeah, the Williamsburg stuff is like 1600s. The Ren Fair is like 1400s. Yeah, that's oh. like back when Chaucer, you know, was happening. Hmm. It's, well. a diff- it's a different kind of ye oldy times. Yeah. But I do love ye oldy times. All right. <laughs> Speaking of you, oldie times, when I was in Dallas last weekend, uh, our hotel was right by a medieval times, but we didn't go. Oh, my God. Oh. I love medieval times. I know. I've, I went to the one in Orlando and I've also been to like the uh, at Excalibur in Las Vegas. It's not medieval times branded, but they have, you know, it's like the Tournament of Kings yeah. show. It's the same thing. We talked. We talked about our love for medieval times in an and, earlier episode. Oh, did well, we? At least one earlier. It was, I think, <laughs> I think in our medieval times episode. God, this hopefully is, that's when we talked about this. This is yeah. sponsorship, just so you know. It's not SponCon. Okay. However, However, medieval, medieval times, we accept your, your bid. Yes, we accept please. your bid. We endorse you. Moving on. Anyway. Well, I have, so I also have a sickest thing of the week in the same vein as Heather's. Um, my cat I mean, he uh, he decided yesterday and also today, actually, to um, hork up two hairballs. So what he likes to do, he'll hork up one and then he walks and then he horks up a second one in a second location. Then he's done and he sits and looks at me and he's fine. And then after I cleaned it up, he started eating his own fur again. So that was stupid. And then he, he did, did it again learn. today like a little asshole. Like, don't steal my fur. Yeah. Now so. I got to eat it again. Yeah, that's not it wasn't pleasant. So. So great. Well, good job. That's uh, some sick stuff. Uh, So I'm excited to learn what is the topics of the week. So would you like to reveal it to me now? Yes. I would say we could go with a traveling theme for today. It's a bit of a vacation theme, if you will. I love that because I love traveling. It's my favorite thing. I know. And we felt since you're soon to be embarking on vacation. I am. And Jen just came back from vacation. Yeah. It felt appropriate. I was even just on a little mini vacation. Yeah. It felt appropriate. This is very apropos. Yeah. Cool. So we also decided that Jen should go first. All right. Justine's is a bit sicker. All right. Cool. 
Uh, drum, drum roll, please. So I'm going to talk about airplanes. Airplane grossness. Airplane grossness. Oh, God. Because, yeah, I am just about to get on an airplane. Yeah, yeah. You're I a veteran, did. though. You already know. Yeah. You're, you're aware, but our I listeners like think about might it. not be aware of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm personally not very fond of flying, as you know, Heather. Yeah. But I remember you're like, oh, I'm a bad flyer. <laughs> However, I've flown with really bad flyers. I'm not the worst. You're not a bad flyer. You're fine. I just quiet and stiff. Yeah, you don't freak that's, out or anything. That's a great flyer. You're very stoic about it. You're fearful, but you're very stoic. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm bad, German. Bad, yeah. <laughs> bad flyers broadcast their bad flyingness, and oh. they make everyone around them feel very uncomfortable. I've, I've, yes, I've, I've personally encountered this. Yeah. Like I like a couple. Oh, I forget where I was going, but like some woman I was sitting near on an airplane, like she kind of like shrieked during turbulence or something. Mm-hmm. Oh god! And I laughed so, at her a little bit because <gasps> I thought she was joking. Like, oh, I'm <laughs> Kenny Wood, I'm on a ride. Oh, and oh. and I, she didn't get mad at me or anything when I realized she was like actually scared. I felt like an asshole, but like, come the fuck on. Whatever, anyway. I would have laughed. Yeah. It was Anyways, funny. we I have no laughed. scruples. I would have went like. <sighs> So I'm going to go ahead. I'm rolling and- my eyes, just so you guys know. Yes. <laughs> you can't see that. <laughs> I'm going to guess that this grossness is going to be about the, um, you're going to get into a little bit of like the uh, germiness. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not going to. Okay. I was like, are we just going to play guess my topic? No, go on. Then yeah. my presentation will just be, mm-hmm. Get into mm-hmm. it. No, get that's, into it. Jen's the one who likes to play guess. Yeah. Guessing yeah. Game. All right. Anyway. So anyway. You're terrible um, watch movies with. So I, I do recognize a flying is a necessary evil. Because I, I, much like you, I like to travel like you as well. And, but none of the reasons I don't like to fly has to do with like planes being gross. It's all because they're flying steel coffins. <laughs> one way to put it. Yeah. Uh, but, and one of the reasons like about actual sickness, but I'll get into that later, but that's actually kind of a moot point. So uh, let's just start with the overall. This clen- point is moot. Moot point. Um, so let's start with the overall cleanliness. First of all, Airlines are all about saving money. You got to. After 9-11, they're all strapped. Yeah, and making efficient use of their time. So they're really not trying to spend a ton of time with planes out of commission, getting them cleaned. There's uh, daily, overnight, and then long-term maintenance on the planes. Are you going to tell me they do a half-ass job? Ugh. I'm saying that they don't always do a very full acid job. Feigned, feigned, uh, with surprise. Feigned surprise. Companies cutting corners weird weird but with the the company's cutting corners thing that i learned that kind of shocked me the most and was like oh this probably is really getting half-assed is normally the cleaning's done by a, an outside company they have an outside company come in and clean them but some airlines should i name names or not name names mm, let's not i oh did God. not sp- does it it rhymes with ear it it does not it does no. not so don't ask any more clarifying questions because it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that one but they actually have uh the flight crew and members of the airline staff doing the cleaning oh like between flights oh. which if sure they're not happy about that no because i'm not sure if you guys are, are aware of this or not but the flight crews don't get paid when they're not in the air do they have a union uh pilots have a union i don't know if like stewardesses do they're not or, stewardess, I'm sorry, flight attendants. Attendants. sorry. yes you're right sorry go I was, on I was, I was raised in the 80s <laughs> But yeah, so if I weren't getting paid to do this, I would not be doing a very good job either. Right. Because it's, yeah, it's, it's meaning, it's a menial labor. How how is it legal to force people to work when they're not getting paid? I'm guessing it's part of the contract that they signed because that's why I think they try to shuffle you on as quickly as possible and get you off of the plane as quickly as possible Mm because they're not getting paid for any of that. That's crazy. So that means when uh, I, I recently flew first class the first time, hmm. and they Bougie ser- bitch. they serve you they serve you drinks before the plane takes off. So yeah, they're not getting paid that for that. Poor, oh my gosh, and they're in, they're in such a good mood too. They're, they're, they're wow. getting paid for that. I I have, I have utmost respect for flight attendants. They have to put up with so much bullshit. Mm-hmm. People on airplanes tend to be assholes. I um, did do again. I, I I don't know. I feel like in another life I could be one. Although it's like I like the idea of like flying around to different cities and that yeah, literally being so my much job. free airfare. Yeah, Ugh. but I also hate people. <laughs> so 
I yeah. Anyway, it's like customer service, but really, really intense customer service. Yeah, you're because you're all stuck in that tube together. Yeah, you just pace up and down, pace up Some and down. Pe- you don't yeah. get a break. But, Some people are drunk. But if people, but if people don't uh, he- heed to your, your instructions, you get to have them arrested later. So that's cool. Tight. Yeah. Well, the flight attendant doesn't really get to do that. It's the pilot because the pilot is the law in the sky. Right, right. But if sky you don't, law. yeah. But if the flight attendant asks you to do something and you refuse, like you can get arrested for that. Sky law. I mostly just wanted to say that the pilot is the sky in the law. Noted. All right. So. All right. So I think that's a 30 Rock reference, by the way. Is it? Yeah. Probably. It's, I know. It's, it's, it's buried oh, Matt, in there. Was that I don't a Matt know Damon is Oh, yeah. Definitely. Carol. Is that where it came yeah. from? Yeah. He's like, he's like, I will waste you. I Yeah. He gets into a fight with Liz Lemon. And I guess they end up breaking up. That, yeah, it was a great episode. Okay. So they're getting half ass wiped down between between flights. Or you get a little bit more attention between flights. Uh, they get a little vacuuming. They might wipe off the seats or the tray or the walls. And then every 30 to 45 days, so very often, the, uh, the seat covers, the tray tables, and the overhead and bins are cleaned, and then the carpets get shampooed. Okay, so let's just note. Just think of how many people. The tray table is only cleaned once a month. It might get wiped once off. Once every in month and flight. a half. It might get wiped off. Okay. And is and are we still talking about that one not named airline or is this just general practice? This is general practice. Got it. No, no. The one unnamed airline was just the ones that have their flight crew clean the planes. Oh, right. right. So uh, a few years ago, I was on a work trip uh, and one of my coworkers that I was traveling with, she handed me a, a like a, a wet wipe to wipe down my seat surfaces. Smart. And well, and at first I thought she was just being like overly like germ phobic. And then she's like, no do you have any idea how dirty these are i'm like oh okay so she's a smart bear she Mm -hmm. is and so i actually now i also try to carry wipes with me except a lot of the times by the time i actually get on the plane and sit down i've forgotten about it and i don't bother i'm about 50 50 now but yes she taught me a very valuable lesson that day that was actually going to be my next point oh sorry i've got to i've got to shuffle around shuffle those pages i'm shuffling my pages because i'm a real journalist is this an actual like paper stand? It's my Kindle stand. Okay. I'm like, there's like, it says Amazon basics on it. I love it. I love that you write your notes on real paper, but you, read, I don't have a computer, but you read books on a Kindle. JB, you're just a Luddite. Just, you know, it makes it just say that it makes it sound more like, you know, bourgeois. Other than that, I'm just a big old mess of contradictions. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, but she reads her books on a Kindle. Yeah. So am I? Well, that's just nothing tracks. Nothing tracks. You I'm can't, just giving you a hard time. I'm sorry. You can't predict me. It's not possible. You can't put JB in a box. You can't put me in a box. Well, you could you. put me in a box. She just like bust right out. Or I might just sit in there and enjoy it because it'd be quiet and like dark. A, like a cat. If I fits, I sit. <laughs> um, um, anyway. Anyway. So yeah, bring your own disinfectant because despite this very thorough cleaning, you know, uh, sometimes the tray tables and anything to do with the bathroom are uh, filthy. There have been studies I've shown that there's not no amount of MRSA and E. coli on all of these surfaces. Yeah, you definitely want to uh, just bring you can just bring like a little, you know, wet one. Just wipe, yeah, just wipe, wipe, wipe off, off your, definitely one. wipe off your tray table. Like, yeah, if not. And definitely bring hand sanitizer because don't touch that bathroom door. Mm. There'd be poop germs on there. Mm. I feel like pee-pee. I feel like the plane should like offer that like wet wipes it, at your seat. That'd be nice. I'd they rather gotta have... cut corners ever since 9-11. I don't know. They I'd don't rather have, have that. any money. I'd they rather don't. Ha- it's true. You're laughing at me, but it's true. I just say I'd rather have that than the stupid magazine. It was like 15 years ago. They should have recouped some of that money. Hashtag never forget. We still have to fucking take our goddamn shoes off in the airport, even though it's such a hoax. Not at Logan. Really? Yeah, you don't have to take your shoes off at Logan. Well, also, Logan's not if you like... pre-check. Ha! Ah. Oh, yeah, I need to get pre-check. You do. Yeah, you should. You, you fly now. For, yeah, all you travel, you definitely should pre-check. Yeah. It is worth it the first time you fly. Worth it. Anyway. All right. And also, I read, and I did not know this, although I've never personally partaken of these um, available amenities, the blankets and the headphones. Oh, yeah. But those are usually reused. And even if the headphones are clean, that's fucking nasty Wait. to put somebody's used he- earbuds in your ear. So even if they're coming in like a... Pa- like a- sealed package they're being if they're, reused. If they're turned in yeah oh they clean them they do clean them but that's just the disgusting. idea that's like a no, that's like the toothbrush that's a non-shareable that's thing sick like why are they oh i'm just gonna put it in this plastic bag and like just give the impression that it's been clean but it has not and then the blankets could have 
whatever on them. What have you? Lice, scabies, bed yeah. bugs. Yeah. yeah. But I I think most people usually travel with their own blanket and headphones. Yeah, I do now. I always cover, uh, just like Douglas Adams said, you always travel with a towel. Seriously, I use it for yeah, a blanket. Mm-hmm. It a makes shawl. Sense. A shawl also works. Absolutely. I usually have a cardigan or something, but yeah. yeah Hi, don't, baby. Don't don't the blanket. Oh, and definitely my noise canceling headphones. I don't travel without them. Good. But uh, if the cleanest spot I found is the window seat. Really? I guess because they clean the windows. Because I guess that's like an aesthetics. Mm. But we want the window to look clean. <laughs> so if all of this grossness is sicking you out, at least try to sit by the window. Oh, I know why. It's because, you know, like the, per- the person in the window has to walk past the person in the middle in the aisle to get out. So like all oh, that. It's getting less touch. They're touching mm. all that where in the middle guy's touching the middle and the outside and the outside guy's touching the outside. Least traffic. So, yeah. So like the least amount of traffic. That, oh, makes, that sense. makes sense. Unfortunately, I hate. Well, I don't hate. I don't mind a window seat. I just hate crawling over people. Yeah. So I usually select an aisle. Oh, yeah. Unless it's a short flight and I know I won't have to get up. You know, one time I was on Southwest and they're like, uh, Southwest boarding zone C stands for center. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody gets in the middle in the the window. They're like, nobody wants to sit in the the center. Nobody wants that. So I mentioned the, the bathroom handles. And I guess overall, the water is pretty pretty disgusting on planes what well they don't, do. wa- don't wash your hands in the sink what? just bring your own hand sanitizer you're really? better off yeah really the tanks are are disinfected like they they are cleaned and disinfected regularly however i guess they all consistently use the exact same disinfectant so the parasites and bacteria that are in the tanks have become resistant to the disinfectant oh so that means also don't get the coffee don't get the tea only drink the water from the bottle oh Ooh. wow because the water they use comes from the same tank mm-hmm. and so they're cleaning it they're following regulations to clean it but guys uh i just want to give our listeners a reminder that we're not only disgusting you but we're giving you like needful information yes. i feel like this is needful info i, I mean I, I feel we need to help people yeah in addition to disgusting them yes be prepared be prepared. I knew you weren't supposed to drink the water out of the bathroom top because they have Don't signs in the there water. saying that. But I didn't know that you weren't supposed to wash your hands with it. Do they? And yeah. I don't think there's not hand sanitizer. So you have to bring your own hand sanitizer with you into the bathroom. That's if you're, you're going to use the soap, I would definitely at least make sure to avoid put eating or putting your fingers in your eyeballs at least <laughs> until you're able to sanitize it or clean it in a better bathroom. I, I did not know that. That's I generally disturbing. avoid the bathrooms on planes unless like I'm going to explode. Also, a weird thing about the bathroom doors is that they both open and lock from the outside. I guess there's a, if there's an emergency. Oh, that, that absolutely makes sense. Yes. Because if people, people overdose in there. Yeah. Or someone just like, dies taking a crap. It, yeah. You need to be able to get yeah. in. You can open it yeah. from the outside? Yeah. It's under the non-smoking sign. What? Can yeah. anyone do it or does it have like be a flight attendant with like, a special something or other? Okay. So I may have just ignited a wave of pranking. I'm going to inspect Guys, don't this. do that. Don't abuse that information. Well, I mean, if someone did that, then they'd probably piss off the flight because the flight attendants are generally hanging out. Yeah. It's usually back right in that yeah. portion of the plane. Like, hey, so, hey, what are you doing in there? Exactly. What are you doing in they'd there? Get like, out of there. What the fuck? Stop. Are you guys trying to fuck in there? Stop but it. it. It makes sense. It makes sense that they would have to have that. As a safety mechanism. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, so you're you're aware of all the germs on the plane. Now, there are also negative health conditions. Uh-huh. Now, I've always been, the thing, the one I was talking about earlier about, like, general sickness in a plane was basically breathing in all of the air of anybody who's coughing or sick on a plane. And I guess apparently that's not really anything you should be too concerned about, that as long as somebody isn't the road directly in front of you or behind you, you have no more of a chance of getting sick than you would anywhere else. Oh, that's good to know. Yes. So that's one thing you can check off of your plane anxiety list. <laughs> Unless somebody next to you is like, <coughs> <coughs> it's all good. Why do people get sick on planes? Well, uh, the air pressure, the very, very low air pressure, it's very much like being in the mountains. And the dry cabin air are not good for you. Uh, it can lead to gas, constipation, and mm-hmm. feeling headachy and groggy. 
Is that that's why like because the pressure changes? That's it's it's the same way why your ears pop, and it's also like the same like all the gases inside your body are like shifting in your body due to this pressure. Is that right? And it's one of those things if you're kind of susceptible to those things, like if you're a person who's prone to digestive problems or headaches, it it'll affect you more. Mm. Uh. And also it's and I guess with the grogginess, it's it's a lot like altitude sickness if people suffer from that. Mm. I, I I've personally been at high altitudes; it doesn't affect me, but I know that not always the case right but it's, it's usually the dehydration that, that kicks your ass yes for, for me 100 percent. i get super dehydrated when yeah, i fly just being, and and i'm a dumb dumb who is like yes please give me alcohol because then that dehydrates you even more i know i'm stupid is that yeah. why they still give you drinks i guess not I on the discount airlines but they give it to you on like delta 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 can i help you help you help you you mean like the soda and the water right well, oh yeah yeah i don't i think that's just an amenity to like so swing should, over should you stay more hydrated? Yes, you should drink more water. You should, I mean... Water is really the only thing you should be drinking on yeah, a plane, really. Soda isn't going to rehydrate you. Not Jaeger bombs, Justine? Yeah, but I'm still... Well, dumb. I mean, Jaeger bisters quench your thirst for partying, but not for dehydration. <laughs> <laughs> I am still a dumb dumb who likes to get, like, a bottle of wine. Like, they'll be not a bottle, you know what I mean? A little personal bottle. Oh, hell yeah, bottle. yeah, drink yeah. a whole big bottle on your flight to New York. Whatever it is. <laughs> That's a lot of wine to get through in a very short amount of time. You're not a quitter. You're a Pisces. You guys can put it away. Oh, Although yeah? you're, you're a slow drinker. I am. I'm you a never very, get through it. I'm a very slow Pisces drinker. can drink people under the table. They are they're, fish. They're known as the drunk sign. <gasps> oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. funny. Now, now Heather is looking at me Nothing. with like a renewed interest <laughs> in her eyes. She's like, oh, Justine flies a lot and she's a Pisces. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. These, none of these. I wonder if no. planes have white claw on them yet. It's probably not. Bullshit. So <laughs> another thing with the dehydration is um, it kills your your sweet and your salty taste buds. Not necessarily your your savory, your sour, your umami. Well, that's your savory one, but I just didn't want to say umami. Why? Because it's know. too hipster. It's, it sounds fucking douchey. It's <laughs> a real thing, though. Umami. It is. But savory, I think, suffices. Yeah. And but all the, those ones are fine. But uh, it kills how you uh taste sweet and salty so airplanes airplanes they don't do anything the airplane <laughs> the airline the airlines the airline cooks just dump sugar and salt in the airplane food airplane the Wolfgang food. puck if you will well of am American i right airlines <laughs> when you get airplane food yeah if you if you're on a flight never. where you'd be eating a meal i can't that, remember the last time i was on a flight where i had a meal me neither. That's Honestly. why they give you pretzels and um and peanuts and shit. Like well, you might you might have an option to purchase a meal when you fly out west. I think still think they feed you if you go international. They do, they do. But even like on a long flight out west, you can like maybe purchase like a sandwich. Yeah, you get bupkis. I just yeah. did fly to San Francisco. Oh we yeah, got yeah, yeah. Did. We didn't get anything. We had the option to buy like a chicken salad sandwich. Right. If so we chose. Yeah, we, we did, did not, not choose. I just slept. We ate weird crap at the airport. But so eating all of that extra salt and sugar is also probably going to make you feel like shit if you eat that. Right. And the pilot and the crew typically don't eat the same food that you do, probably because they're sick of it. But also the pilot has to eat different food just in case there's food sickness. Something, a contaminant, a contaminant in the food. <laughs> food sickness. <laughs> I mean, hopefully there's not like actual food sickness in the food. That's, that's a whole different episode of that sick. Yeah. Places that serve you vomit. Oh, God. No, th- I'm making a joke. That's, <laughs> what the that's fuck? not a thing. I don't know. People are in anything. People eat that weird rotting onion shit. That is beyond the pale. What's that thing called? Rotting onion? Yeah, it's it's an Asian delicacy. And I guess it's kind of like cilantro where either it tastes delicious to you or it tastes like abhorrent. Soap. It doesn't taste like a bit. I mean, just like it's either really good or it's really bad. Yeah. But it's like a it's a fruit. That either tastes really sweet and delicious or like you're eating a rotten onion. You mean Dorian? Yeah. Oh my God. Or Dorian? Had, Sorry. Dorian, yeah. Dorian. Dude, guys. I've had it. It's disgusting. You've it tastes had like it? an armpit. Have you had it? No. I've never had it. You know what we should do? We should do a segment on that sick where like we eat Dorian and we like. Maybe we know. should. Maybe we could taste test all kinds of things that are considered to be traditionally yeah. gross. Like yeah. Durian, Limburger. Yeah. I think I, we should make that like a video segment, though. We could. We could. Our, our little it. faces. Our little faces. Go, maybe if we Ugh. if we just get a if we get a Patreon, if we get a Patreon. Well, that would oh. be good bonus content. OK, there we go. Watch us eat gross stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I don't 
no, no. We are already losing subscribers by the minute. I don't think we're we're not losing subscribers. We're losing Instagram followers. That's different. People are like, that's That's thought too our sick. Picture. Unfollow. Yeah. No, no, no. People <laughs> love watching videos of people eating weird stuff. Oh, well, oh, do they? BuzzFeed makes million of dollars doing it. Fear, fear factor happened. Yeah. I'm not eating bugs. Honey, child, no. No, that's not what we signed up for. Uh-uh. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. All right. So so the pilot has to eat different food in case in the case food is a, like poisoned or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Or just bad. something's bad. Like, he takes his own lunch in a little tote bag. That or, is, or, or, they, or they make him a special meal. So it, Or like, her or them. Yes. Now I want to get to my favorite, su- my favorite sick subject to talk about. Dead bodies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Dead bodies in planes. You Dead love- bodies in planes. So as a little facty, a little fun facty facty. A little factoid for you. 94 people die on planes a year. Per I guess year? That's it? That like di- like an individual dying on a plane, not like <laughs> them going kaboom boom. Oh, no, no, I wasn't. I, I assumed you weren't including that. That still surprises me as a low number. That's when it, you, yeah. When Only- you consider how many people fly every day. I guess most people are generally advised not to fly if they're very sick. Mm. What's the most common cause of death on plane? I don't know. I'm going to guess most of the cases that I saw mentioned, like people who were already sick and going. Heart attacks. Well, there's people who are already sick and like probably going somewhere as like a last thing or going to get treatment. And then you Carrie know, Fisher did it. <sighs> they croaked. I don't know. Is that what happened to her? She had a massive heart attack on a plane. Yeah. Mm. So if somebody if somebody is oh very gosh, sick the queen. and they croak on the plane, they'll normally like if they're aware that they're already sick. They'll usually try to make a quick emergency landing to see if they can be revived because they're aware that this person might die while they're in flight. Yeah. They got to land in some obscure airport like we're in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. We got to make an emergency landing. Yeah. But if it's something sudden, like somebody having a heart attack or choking on a pretzel rod. <laughs> then- Doing a George W. George W. Bush. <laughs> Did he die on a plane? No, he choked on a pretzel one time. And I thought it was that so was stupid. His, I thought that was his father. No, it was George Dubs. Oh, okay. No, his father puked on, a, on the Japanese, Japanese, Japanese prime Japanese. minister. Right. Ah, ah. We are old enough to remember that. Oh, I do remember God. that. That was like the shit on Saturday Night oh, Live. Oh, my God. It was so Children, funny. look it up. <laughs> Our president puked on like the Japanese like prime minister or like some kind of consulate i think like, it was prime minister oh I think. my god but i, I think it was the hbic yeah <laughs> but he was <laughs> you know he felt bad about it he didn't yeah. do it on purpose unlike the current president yeah he probably yeah. threw up and say this is what i think about sushi <laughs> 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 i want more hamburgers <laughs> yeah, i want more well done steaks coated in ketchup oh my god that's the biggest offense to food <laughs> ever <laughs> <laughs> gross oh the fact that he fucking eats well done steaks with ketchup sick as fuck it's literally a reason to not vote for him like (laughs) really really that alone like i mean come on anybody who appreciates steak if you hear that statistic you hear that fact you know you shouldn't vote for dj someone no. no, you can't trust someone who likes their steak well done. He's probably taking a fucking Kobe beef that was like massaged by like, you know, uh, for since the day it was born, it was like massaged and, and, and like the meat is so succulent and tender. And then he's like, well done, covered in Heinz. I'm like, what? Yeah, right. He wouldn't have Heinz. He wouldn't have Heinz. He'd have Hunts. Hunts. Come on. Oh, yeah. God. Who are you? Yeah, he would have Hunts. <laughs> Don't you ever sully the good name of Heinz like that? Yeah, that's that's really yeah. Sorry, I I really I apologize to Pittsburghers because I don't want. Do not at me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, all right. So we were talking about dead people on planes. Dead people right. on planes. Um, so they're dead. They're all, they're they died. They got they got RIP'd. Uh, what do they do with the planes? With the planes or bodies? Bodies. Sorry, that's all right. Too many white claws already. No, I'm just kind of out of it. But um, no, you're really rallying. Considered you, you just came back from vacation. Rallying. I'm rallying for sure. I'm rallying. Uh, so so what do they do with the bodies? Uh, Singapore Airlines has a special corpse cupboard to put the dead bodies in. I love that. As far as I can tell, they're the only airline that does have such an amenity. It's very planful. Yeah, Singapore I, is a bougie place. Yeah. So, Singapore Airlines is supposed to be like. Is that the real fancy one? Well, I mean, there's several very fancy ones, but I think that's one of them. Well, yeah. Singapore yeah. has a lot of banana laws about bananas laws about 
uh, cleanliness. You're mm. not allowed to chew gum there. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that so kind I guess of it stuff. would carry on to their airline. Yeah, it's a pretty, um, I don't know if I'd say totalitarian, but it's just like very strict. Mm. It's strict. a city state, you know, it's, not, it's very tiny, but. Sure. So for the places that do not have this handy dandy corpse covered, uh, normally if there's room, which I haven't been on very many flights where there's an empty row, but if there's enough room on a plane to have an empty row, they'll take the body and go lay them down in the back row. Oh, God. But if that is not available, they'll basically try to find people who are willing to sit next to the dead body and then <gasps> just wrap them up in blankets like Weekend or Bernie style. <gasps> Also, another cool, relevant reference. No way. Oh, good. Oh, my God. I love Weekend at Bernie's, by the way. I really do legit love Weekend at Bernie's. No, Weekend at Bernie's is the shit. Yeah, it's so funny. So I, I had heard that before. And I saw every like every time I hear it, I just like my heart kind of like skips. Like, I just I don't want that to like, happen. Like, you're stuck. Somebody's I, sitting next to the corpse. I know. And I and I get it. I get it. Because if like you said, if it happens on average, like 94 people. It barely ever die. happens. Right. So I can understand why it's not cost effective to bake that contingency into, you know, the the airplane itself. And especially when you're trying to maximize. You're not going to leave you know, an empty profits. seat just in case someone croaks. Right. But just like the reality of that is is just very disturbing. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't like that. I wouldn't no. want to sit next to weekend at Bernie's. No. <laughs> Mm-mm. Nope. Ugh. I could do it, but not for long. I mean, yeah, it like if I'm flying to New York, sure. If I'm flying to, I don't know, Jamaica, that's not even that far. Why did I pick Jamaica as a really far it's location? Farther than New York. Yeah, I would not want to sit for five hours on a plane with. with I don't a know if I'd sit next to a corpse for like nine hours. I don't know if I'd do five hours, depending on if it starts to stink. I was like, I don't know. Do they put the corpse in the window seat? Uh, At least you're out of the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah what if it's like do they keep them yeah in what their if it original starts, seat what if it starts to leak uh what do if they it, put them in a body bag i don't know if they put them in a body bag i know they mentioned that they let they wrap them up but i i doubt they have body bags on hand i oh, they should yeah, they should oh my god i wonder if they at least wash those blankets after they're done wrapping the i hope that they them. they burn those oh, i hope no. that's their last they burn stand them. excuse me miss is this a body blanket has this ever been wrapped around a corpse Oh my God! Christ, uh, I would love to hear from people. Uh, did you get? It? I would love to see any like firsthand accounts of people that have had to sit next to corpses. Yeah, I did not find any of that, but uh, I this bet is it, kind I'm sure of like, it's out there. This is something I haven't thought of honestly because I, I watched a couple of YouTube videos, but it was literally just people filming the inside of an airline cabin, and I was like, I can't. This, see is, this is underwhelming. This is extremely underwhelming. Yeah. Be like, oh, something's going on over there. Oh, this man died. Whatever. There's a dead person there. Like, there's a dead person. There was nobody. Well, but I suppose it would be tacky. It would be like, selfie with me in the dead body on the plane. Yeah. Unless you knew them. Yeah. I, I knew people died on but the plane. But even that's probably the last thing you're thinking of. Yeah. I had no idea that. I didn't think about where you put the body after it dies. That somebody would have to. I never actually. I didn't think that somebody would have to sit next to it for a prolonged period of time happen sometimes i wonder not like, often but sometimes what if what if everyone refused what if everyone was like Fuck well then no. i think you're stuck then like probably the body like stays in its seat and the people who oh they could maybe put it in the flight attendant seat i think the they have to keep seat? that clear for yeah. for safety regulations they should just oh. put it in no, one no no no. like nobody volunteers like you have to stay in your seat they make it the co-pilot <laughs> no but i mean really like the 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 human remains stays in their seat and you're stuck sitting next to it whether now, you agreed or not. I, I could see people suing the airline for emotional damage and distress if if they were for like honestly. It might be in that really fine print if you go looking down on your receipt. Like it says like you- I <laughs> give up my right to sit next not sit next to a dead body on a plane. <laughs> like nobody ever reads the user agreement. Well definitely yeah, if you're fl- nobody, yeah. definitely if you're flying basic economy, I mean. Right. Like, I'm, like, flying out at 5 a.m. because I want to save $30. I'm definitely not reading. Uh, could you imagine if you, you went on um, uh, Beerit Airlines and uh, and then someone croaked and was sitting next to you? Like, not a, oh, that's just insult to injury. Because yeah, then you're, you're already in a tiny ass seat. <laughs> oh, God. And there's no amenities on the plane. None, no amenities. This is, this is really dark and bleak and sad. 
Ugh, we're losing I'm followers. So, oh, we're I'm sad now. We're the Dead Body Podcast. All right, Jamie. All right, anyway, so... Are you but, wrapping it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, dead bodies. I don't want to sit next to one. You guys don't want to sit next to one. No one does. But no one wants to die on a plane. So... Uh, no, it's true. It's It's got to get better from here, right? You're going to tell us no, you? No, 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 no. That's me. That's oh. me looking to you to say, like, it'll get better because you've got something better. Oh, is it going to? No, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. OK, OK. Here, <laughs> I got a fun fact that maybe will make everybody, oh, thank everybody God. smile. Thank God. That because there are not medical professionals on a plane, unless there's like one of those, is there a doctor on the plane situation comes? Uh, nobody is ever declared dead on a plane. So technically, nobody ever dies on a plane. Oh, they don't oh, die I, until they get to where the plane lands. I think I have heard of this. Yeah. So there you go. Actually, nobody ever dies on a plane. So nobody ever sits oh, next so to you're a not, dead body. You're not sitting next to a dead body. You're just sitting next to a very, very sick, sleepy body. Yes. Okay. But nobody, if there is a licensed physician on the plane, can they declare somebody dead on I, the plane? I don't know what the rules are with that sort of thing. I think they could. But still, that's kind of interesting. Damn hmm. it, Heather. I was trying to leave it on a positive note. Just let's you're just trying to let a uh, big airline off the hook and I won't let you. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. No one dies in the skies. No one dies in the skies. As far as JB's concerned, apparently. And that's oh. that. And that's that. Well, thanks. Right. That was awesome. Uh, the My second turn. half of our show. All right. Justine's turn. So after you've been on your flight and you land, where do you go? You go to your hotel. Uh, oh, so Uh-oh. I <laughs> see where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we actually this time we specifically tried to traumatize you before your vacation. So dickheads, why are you staying in a hotel on your vacation? <laughs> why do you dickheads hate me so much? <laughs> oh, my friends are evil. Uh, evil. You're, the, you're the one who's always hailing Satan. Uh, I am hailing Satan, but. So, okay, I personally love staying in hotels. It's got a comfy bed. There are blackout curtains. I like the tiny toiletries. Like, I just love it. Um, But it's not going to surprise anyone that grossness lurks beneath the crisp sheets and folded toilet paper rolls. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So, okay, so we all... We all know we all know about the potential for bed bugs in the mattress. Oh, my God. That's and, so gross. and how the duvet cover probably hasn't been changed in a long time. And You're not even going to go into that. There's something grosser than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And then a black that's light. Just regular gross. A oh. black light will almost definitely reveal all sorts of sick stains you'd rather not know about. We all know that. Yeah. Jism. Yeah. I'm Blood, not gonna, I'm pee. Not, I'm not going to go into any of that because that's, Man jam. That's, that's a that's standard. Disgusting. That's a standard BuzzFeed article. Animal sauce. <laughs> We're not talking about any of that. So probably the grossest, sickest thing about staying in a hotel room, it's not necessarily about how thoroughly it's been cleaned, although that is going to factor into it somewhat. For me, it's about the terrible things that might have happened in there before you got there. Oh, like somebody doing the bump bump. Well, more like fine. More like people who have died. Oh, oh, dead bodies. So like on an airplane, it's a morbid reality that people do die in hotel rooms, and apparently much more frequently than on planes. Um, and it can be from natural causes, by accident, uh, very sadly, suicide and also homicide. Uh, um, so all, all kinds of reasons. So uh, so what happens when someone does die in their hotel room? You know, what's the protocol? What actions are taken? So according to an article on Thrillist by Matt Meltzer, there's a lot that goes into taking care of this particular situation. I'm so intrigued. First, some poor hotel employee is usually the one to discover the body. Oh, God. Of course. Appropriate- oh, my God. That sucks. We're not going to dwell on it for too long. So appropriate authorities are called. Um, assuming this is a reputable hotel. Um, I did learn that <laughs> in, in cheaper or less reputable establishments, sometimes the hotel employees are the ones who have to clean up after it oh but oh my god let's write the crank and spank now, so I, I will i'm also Drag gonna say the dumpster. i'm gonna <laughs> say well i think you always have to call the appropriate authorities at a minimum but probably but I, i'm gonna say i'm not naming any hotel chains in this piece and and i and i almost have my sources um that i got most of my sources from two articles um so this first one from thrillist so they t- uh, authorities take the body away um and they potentially investigate a crime scene if that's needed Sometimes, sometimes not. So after that, it's time to clean the room. So if it's a good hotel chain, they will bring in professional cleaners who specialize in taking care of death-related messes. 
and they will go above and beyond in replacing anything affected by the incident. So for someone who passed away from something like a heart attack and was discovered relatively quickly, this can be like a simple matter, but more advanced decomposition or a messier death can be much more time consuming to clean up. So in severe cases, nearly everything in the room will be discarded and replaced, including the mattress, the headboard, electronics, artwork, upholstered furniture, etc. And in extreme cases, the only things left in the room are the walls, the ceiling, and any metal furniture or fixtures. Remaining surfaces are then deep cleaned and sanitized using specialized products not available to the general public, often the same types of cleaners used in slaughterhouses. Oh, abattoirs. Yeah. Makes sense. Yep. Wallpaper is torn down and replaced, and walls and ceilings are repainted, and they'll even replace drywall if necessary. And on the other hand, and I mentioned this before, a less reputable establishment might not have the means. <laughs> Jenna's wearing her comfort animal on her head. I broke. Yes. She broke. You're welcome. Like that. All right. So. She's a Jimmy Fallon of this podcast. I am? I think he's the one who always broke. That was another timely relevant reference. Jimmy Fallon me. always broke. I prefer to think of myself as Bill Hader doing stuff on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love Stefan. Anyway, on the other hand, and I mentioned this earlier, um, less reputable establishments may not have the means or the will to shell out for professional cleaners. So while it's extremely unlikely, it's not impossible to end up sleeping on the same mattress someone died on, just flipped over or covered with a mattress pad. So think about that the next time you decide to cheap out on your accommodations. Oh, God. Still going to do it. Yeah. And again, like no, no specific hotels were accused in that. Just that's a blanket statement from crime scene cleanup professionals. So probably no, noting what they have seen in their <laughs> days. So you got to look up the hotel you're staying at, check the crime report for the location, and then you can be cheap as long as there were no murders or heart attacks. Yeah, I'm overdoses. not doing that. I'm, yeah, not gonna, no, I'm no just going with that. the cheapest rate. Yeah. Anyway. At the end of all this, if everyone's done their job correctly, you'll never be able to tell if someone died violently in your hotel room. But no one's perfect, so there can be some telltale signs if you know where to look. And I'm going to share them with you now. Oh, God. Do we really want to know? Yes, you do. <laughs> We're going to tell you. <laughs> so first, if you notice any bumps on the wall in your hotel room, that can indicate damage that has been repaired. And that doesn't necessarily mean that anything bad happened in the room. But for bumps smaller than a quarter, there's a good chance it was a bullet hole. Oh. <coughs> what? Yep. I mean, it can mean like bumps that have been like indicate repair can mean, you know, someone, you know, bashed into the wall, like someone hit the wall with something like furniture. It can mean all kinds of things. It doesn't mean it was a bullet hole, but that is what they said. If it's round and smaller than a quarter, it maybe was a bullet hole. Oh, my. If parts of your hotel room look new while other parts look old, that can be an indicator of partial renovation. So in other words, something happened that affected part of the room enough to require it to be replaced. So really, really good cleanup crew will actually turn the entire room so you can't tell what needed to be replaced and what didn't. So it just all looks like new construction. Oh, that makes sense. But if like a crew is like less experienced or if they are trying to stretch their dollar they may only replace what needs to be replaced and so that's when you can see maybe say um brand new wallpaper like fresh wallpaper on one wall but then faded wallpaper on another wall or if some of the furniture looks like super new and then some of the old furniture looks like older and shabby and again it doesn't mean that something bad happened it's just it can be an indicator if the air conditioning unit smells bad uh Apparently, it's one of the most overlooked parts of the room when it comes to post-death cleanup. And in the Thrillist article that I got a lot of this from, a cleanup professional named Chris v Vigors explained that after certain deaths, bits of tissue and fluid can end up in the vents of an AC unit, eventually seeping into the wiring and causing Ooh. the air blowing out into the room to smell like decomposing flesh. Oh, God. Yeah. And apparently most people, like, it doesn't, like, they'll just complain that the AC smells bad, but it doesn't like occur to anyone why so i thought that was pretty horrifying um dead flies and light fixtures can also be a tip off if a body goes undiscovered for a few days flies start to infest the room and tend to crawl up into light fixtures and get stuck oh. so a really good cleanup crew will remove the fixtures to clean and sanitize them but a less thorough crew may miss this detail 
And the last clue mentioned in the Thrillist article is that if you notice the ceiling looks odd, uh, if the situation required the ceiling to be partially replaced, it may look a bit different from the rest of the ceiling. So like I said before, none of those things prove that someone died in your room. It can mean so many different things like leaks, smoking, pet damage, etc. But you know, it's a pretty obvious sign that someone has died in your hotel room. What? Blood. Finding a dead body in it. Ah, uh, well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I already mentioned that hotel employees are often the ones to find dead bodies, but in cases of foul play, and more often than you would think, foul play, the perpetrator will hide the body under the mattress and peace on out. And in most cases, in those cases, the hotel staff that comes in to turn the room, they don't always realize what's happened, <gasps> which means the room goes to new guests. Oh, that is who a also, one star Yelp review waiting to happen. Who also <laughs> don't realize what's happened and who sleep blissfully unaware, mere inches from a decomposing corpse. No way that's happened. That's happened many, many, many times. Really? Many, many, many. I snoped it. Because the first, the first um, mention I saw, I immediately was like, I don't think that's true. That's oh an urban God. legend. And I looked it up on Snopes. And not only is it true, there's like many, 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 many instances of this happening. You hear that, folks? Many, many, many. And by many, 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 I mean like up to a dozen, not hundreds and thousands. Like This okay. isn't happening all over like a year, ever, ever, ever. That's not that many times. Wait, 12 times ever? More than 12, probably. Okay, that's not as many as I thought. But that's still more than none. <laughs> so, uh, usually these bodies are discovered once they start smelling enough for guests to complain forcefully to hotel management. Yeah. And in several cases, this happens after at least one and sometimes multiple sets of guests have rotated through the room. Sick nasty. So, these examples that I'm about to talk about... Um, they are directly from a Snopes article written by David Mickelson, and they're so good. I'm just going to read them verbatim for the most part. So this is coming straight from David Mickelson's Snopes okay. article. Thank you for writing it and researching it so I can read it on my podcast. Right. On July 10th, 2003, a man checked into the just east of downtown Kansas City and began complaining about a foul odor in his room. Foul odor in his room. Management told him nothing could be done about the problem, and he spent three nights in his room before checking out because he could no longer stand the smell. When the cleaning staff came in to make up the room on July 13th, they lifted the mattress and underneath found a man's body in an advanced stage of decomposition. Oh, my God. On June 10th, 1999, the rapidly decomposing remains of 64-year-old Saul Hernandez were discovered inside the bed in room 112. I'm not going to read the name of this motel just seems well i just read the first one maybe i'll bleep that out i don't know that just seems like this has all been reported but i feel weird calling out specific hotels um a german couple had spent the night sleeping over hernandez's remains and it was their complaint to the manager about the smell in their room which led to the discovery of the corpse in july 1996 a woman's body was found under a mattress in the colorado boulevard beep sorry a hotel there Apparently, the motel's staff discovered her 10 days after her demise and only after guests had complained for several days of a foul odor coming from that room. There were two cases in Florida in 1994. In August, in Fort Lauderdale, hotel staff discovered the body of 47-year-old Brian Gregory tucked under a platform bed. And though the staff had noticed a strange smell for days, they only set about looking for its source after German couples spent the night in that room and afterwards complained about the odor. And then in March of that year, the body of 24-year-old Josefina Martinez was found underneath the bed at a hotel near Miami International Airport. And again, the discovery was prompted by an aggrieved German tourist upset about a foul odor in his room. Oh, my God. <laughs> it just keeps going. I've never. OK, so I've smelled a decomposing mouse body, which basically smelled like a disgusting porta potty. Could you imagine that no. being like a corpse? I can't imagine. Times a million, like that smell times a million. Well, so, yeah, I can't. Sometimes in some of these cases, the body's found because a guest refuses to stay in the room. Well, yeah. Like a lot like, of these. This is fucking nasty. Like a lot of these, they just complain, but they stay in the room and then complain. But sometimes it's found because someone is like, I'm not staying in that room. 
question is like the corpse sometimes you mentioned the corpse is like found like under the mattress is this you're talking between the box spring and the mattress um or under the bed usually i usually under the bed so Uh, not like yeah like a a child hiding the report card well because a lot of (laughs) what the fuck what like you know they're like oh i don't want anyone to see this so i'm just gonna slide it under the bed okay (laughs) or a dead body Right. They're, they're basically the same thing. A lot of hotels have platform beds, so it's like there's a space that you can't see. Anyway, there is like way more here. Um, <laughs> uh, in Virginia, 1989, Jerry Lee Dunbar disposed of the remains of two victims this way. One was discovered under the floor of a motel room on Route 1, and the other turned up in June under the bed of another Virginia motel. Um, in the first case... The killer kept her body partially hidden under his bed for two days and then placed it in the crawl space under the carpeted floor. And her presence didn't bother him because he didn't move out of that room until three or four weeks later. Yuck. Both of the bodies were eventually found after other guests complained about the stink. Oh, my God. Uh... Um, in Mineola, New York, in 1988, a body turned up in a box spring. The remains were found, and the body was discovered days later and only after other patrons complained about the smell. At least two other guests unknowingly cohabited with the body before it was found. At least one guest refused to stay in that room because of the smell. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe, like, okay, somebody complains, and then, like, they're not, they don't just go right up and, oh, okay, I'll check it out. They're like, no, I don't believe you. Or, like, fucking deal with it. Like, what the hell? Well, but these are all, like, these are all, like, shitty, cheap. Yeah. Like, not, like, the kind of places that don't give a fuck. Am I going to spoil for you? I have, there's a very famous case that I'm wondering if you're going to touch on. I mean, I'm just, go, go ahead, because I'm just, like, kind of reading a little snippet. The Cecil Hotel. Mm, That's the one I don't think it's on my list. The woman was uh, dead in the water tank that was on the on the Yeah, so that's, um, you know what? I I know that story. I completely forgot about it. That yeah. would have been a great one to cover today. So we'll have to cover that another time because that yeah. was a pretty, that's a pretty nasty one. Seriously. I think that's worth its own episode, honestly. Yeah, it could be. Absolutely. Um, in Rosedale, Maryland in 1987, an unidentified man died of a drug overdose after one of the 34 balloons of heroin he'd swallowed burst oh that that'll do it his partner stashed the corpse under the motel bed and split three days later the family the room was next rented to complained about the odor and this led to the body's discovery and then the last i'm going to share is the most recent from the snopes article and there's there's more i just like took a bunch from the snopes article because they all came from the same you know article um but yeah, there, there were like a lovely little sampling of this oh sampling there, there there have been there have been more cases of cases of this reported just in the past like couple years so this happens yeah yeah um so this last one in january 2010 sony millbrook of memphis tennessee was reported missing after she failed to pick up her children from school 47 days later in march Homicide investigators were called to the room of a motel where she had been living just prior to her disappearance, and her body had just been discovered inside the frame of the bed there, even though the room had reportedly been cleaned and rented several times since her disappearance almost seven weeks earlier. Not clean good enough. That's why, you know, hotel maids and shit don't get paid enough, because if they got paid enough, they would be thorough enough to check and see if there were corpses there. (laughs) Because it'd be a job worth losing. Pay them a living wage. Pay everybody a living wage. Universal living wage. Can you imagine? Can you imagine finding out that you slept in a hotel room that had a dead body in it? Uh, no. Like, no, I cannot. I, ugh, it's so I, creepy to me. I could deal with it, but I'd be like, the negligence. How dare they? So like, do, you, do you think they should? Do you think it should just be like a matter of course to like lift up the mattress and box spring just to check underneath? There should Every be time. like a step by step procedure to breaking down a hotel room, and that should be one of the things. Right. Why? I is mean, that, like the body I, and the floorboards, I can, that's I'm, probably going to slip past somebody. That's but like check between the fucking mattress and the box ring. Why is that not a routine? Check under the bed. Why is that not a routine? Well, I can kind of understand why because it's, again, like the, you know, bodies, like people dying in airplanes. It's not like it's happening often enough for it to make sense, like be efficient to make that be like. A normal routine like time to do the body check but, but if you're really making a bed and you're taking the sheets off 
you can see under the mattress. Well, we all know they don't wash the comforter. And if they're vacuuming the whole floor. But these, again, these are normally, these aren't in cases of beds where you can see under the bed. These are like platform beds that go all the way down to the floor. So there's no way to see where these bodies are unless you're lifting up the mattress and the box spring. That and, it does and seem so extra. I can understand. I can understand why they go undiscovered at first, but as soon as they start smelling, like I don't understand. I imagine there's first. There's like, oh, it kind of smells weird. Maybe the sewer is backed up. And you're just <laughs> yeah. like, maybe, maybe someone took a stinky poopy. And then, then you're like, no, no, this is a smell. This is yeah. This is a smell I've never smelled before. This is permeating everything. Yeah. So, who is excited to go on vacation now? Me still, because Good. guess what? Me I'm still. renting a camper van. Maybe somebody died in the back of the camper van. You'll but never know. But the body won't still be there. Yeah. We hope not. And I'm staying in an Airbnb, so it's somebody's house. So it could have been, you know, it could be murderers. It yeah, could be haunted. I'm staying in that too. Yeah. It could be. Ha- I hope so. Whatever. That'd be fun. Do you guys believe in ghosts? Kinda. I wish I did, but not really. Yeah, I'm like kind of do. I have had some friends that have told me some like semi convincing stories, but those friends have also turned out to be like semi unreliable and, you know, other areas in their life. So I don't know if I should truly believe them. I have I can see I don't know. I have a whole like working theory on. Anyway, I'll talk to you about it offline. Brought that's not what, that's not what this podcast this is, is not about. spooky podcast right this is yeah, not a paranormal not podcast. Spooky podcast well this is gonna air probably around halloween time no this is still in september yeah we can it make is? like we can make like a spooky mm. themed one for our halloween week we one we 100 percent should yeah yeah we will we can make all of october spooky yeah but definitely skeletons and stuff all right well too bad we already did memento mori we already jumped on that. Womp yeah. womp. That was spooky. But anyways, so is that the end, Justine? That was it. I'm done. Well, good job. That Thanks. was awesome. I learned some things I didn't know. That's fucking great. I was and horrified. Disgusted. I was, was horrified. Disgusted. And we didn't actually traumatize you. I was only no. giving you a hard time. But you know what? The best thing about this podcast is like we're learning things, but also hopefully uh, I know it's like fun and disgusting and it's horrifying. But uh, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And now that uh, you are informed, you (laughs) you know, go into these things with open eyes and take some hand sanitizer with you. Yeah. So takeaways. Take wet wipes for your plane tray. Take hand sanitizer for the bathroom. Drink water on the plane. Check your mattress for bed bugs in the hotel. Mm. And if your room smells, check under the bed to see if there's a body there. Report any extreme smells. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the best that's the best advice I can give. That's solid advice. Yeah. So does anybody have a what's the sickest thing of the week in a good way? Well, yeah. Just what you eat? got? You got I mean, your eyes I think, lit up. Duh. So even though this podcast is coming out probably sometime at the end of September, yeah. we are recording mere days after Taylor Swift's new album dropped. Oh, yeah. That oh, was yeah. great. Yeah, we're all a we, bunch of Swifties. We, we've here. all I, we wouldn't go so far as to say we're stands. We don't go and buy every single version of the album from Target the day it comes out. I say I stand everybody very loosely. I'm just like I stand yeah. this person, I stand that person. But it doesn't mean anything coming yeah. from you. Yeah, it doesn't. Hey, rude! How dare you? Okay, look. <laughs> Let's be honest. This album, it's full of bops. It's good, and we I don't love ca- Lava, and we don't care what you think, yeah. and we're very excited. But so. you should like it. I, I mean, decided. Whatever. And the new Missy, uh, the new Missy EP oh, yeah. slaps. I listened to that too. It's so good. It uh, slaps. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. believe she hasn't put out an album since like the mid two thousand. Really? Yes. It's been I that long. So. Yes. Wow. She's such a treasure. Yeah, she is. Oh. Treasure. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Tay Tay and Missy. Uh, that's that is the sickest thing in the week for me. I agree. It's pretty sick. JB, you got anything extra? Um. I uh, speaking of ghosts, I went on a ghost tour when I was in Williamsburg. Did you oh, yeah. see any ghosts? I did not, but mm-hmm. I did get to hear a lot of spooky stories in front of the historic locations that they took place in. I like that. So that I, was pretty fun. The, the, did they claim the stories were true? They did. Of course well, they do. That's the whole you point give of me it. An example. Um. Well, I think I briefly mentioned. No, no, I just mentioned the uh the palace, and they had their little their little gargoyle things on top of it. But um. So at the palace, at the, at the Williamsburg Palace, there is a little hedge maze that was, is very popular for William and Mary students to go and like 
go on a little walk, have maybe like a little romantic rendezvous. Do a little bit of uh, whatever, wait, whatever hey, you hey, be hey. doing in the, uh, the wait, hedge maze. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so a young couple had gone to go on a moonlit walk in the hedge maze. And it's a, it's a high gate to get in. So the gentleman hoisted his lady into there. And then she got slashed and murdered by an escaped mental patient. Oh, oh my. And then that's that's what happened. And what did it happen to him? He, he ran he away. Escaped. So or he killed his girlfriend and he ran away and blamed it on an escaped mental patient. That's probably more likely. Yeah. I told my dad the story and he's like, oh, so you're saying the guy killed his girlfriend? Yeah. I was like, that's not what they said. He's like, but, you know, that's probably what really happened. Your dad's smart. What does so her ghost haunt the hedge maze? Oh, yeah. You can see her spirit pacing around the ground. But you did not personally. I did not. I did not. I was not so fortunate. I didn't see any actual ghosts. Mm. I just saw a haunted ghost poop. Have any of you guys been to Gettysburg? I've not. Yes. I, have you been on? I've never been. I, I mean, want to go. We went because I, I grew up in eastern Pennsylvania. So we went like on class trips to like Gettysburg and Valley Forge and stuff because it wasn't that far. Yeah. So I don't have great memories of it. Because it wasn't a special destination. I was also like 11 probably. So I don't know. Do they dress up like ye oldie times? I don't remember. I don't think so. I mean, if they were doing a reenactment, maybe, but they're not always just a museum. Yeah. In general, it's like a museum and like grounds and you go on a tour and like you learn about what happened there. But um, it's it's not like constant reenactments necessarily. I don't. That's not not that I remember. Not in the early 90s. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's probably ghosts there, though. Lots of deaths. I want to go there. Yeah. I go tour. I hear you can see orbs. Ooh. I hear a lot about orbs. Hmm. I don't really believe in ghosts, but I'm scared. Of, I'm scared of them. <laughs> That's what I say. I don't believe in them, but I'm scared of them. Uh, anyway, uh, I guess we can wrap this episode up. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for listening again. Uh, we enjoyed this one. I know I enjoyed this one. Uh, Justine, would you uh, please do the honors of telling everybody how you can find us and uh, rate and review us? Oh, yes. So. Uh, if you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love it if you could subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever else you found us. Uh, please rate and review, especially if, you, review. especially if you liked what you heard. We'd really Only appreciate it. Only if it's it. nice. Right. Five please. stars. Please be nice. <laughs> um, you can follow us on Twitter at That Sick Pod and on Instagram at That Sick Podcast. And... You can visit our website at thatsickpodcast.com or email us at thats.sick.podcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. And that's it. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, don't drink the airplane tank water because that's, that's sick. sick.